you want to create great music, I feel like you got to surround yourself with great people who really love each other. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Dan Nastasi of Kings Never Die and a million other bands. How are you doing? <laughs> Everything's great, man. Everything's great. I'm so glad to hear it. It has been a dumpster fire time. So when everybody says they're great, I believe it because it's been rough. Yeah. I mean, listen, our first release literally came out about four to five weeks before the pandemic, which just crushed everything. But uh, I feel like it's a, like it was a godsend almost. You know what I mean? Like, I love the Raise a Glass EP, but the time, let's say, in lockdown was really productive. And I feel like now we have like the band is together and it was like a blessing. You know what I mean? Like you got to turn a negative into a positive. Well, you know, for us, I really feel like that was the case. And I feel like we really found our sound, like what, who we are and what we are. And, uh, and for that, you know, we're all like super excited. Right on. I agree with that actually. And uh, anybody who's, Get it should be getting hype for this good times and the bad release coming out soon. Super pumped and uh, pre-orders are up. We're going to link everything in the description when this runs. Uh, album might be out by the time this runs, but we're going to we're going to pump it up as much as we can and work Killer. on getting coverage and all this stuff. And again, this chat is part of that. We actually yeah, we were part of the early uh, promotional thing. I think we helped premiere a video on Ghost Cult for you guys uh, from the first EP. Yeah. Might have been, I don't think it was Raise a Glass. I think it was the other one, the lyric video. Yeah, man, just super excited. This is a very exciting project. Yeah, it's weird that, you know, I, I no disrespect to anybody who could not, I know some bands and artists were like, we can't get together in a room. I don't like doing stuff over video. I hate Zoom. Yeah. Nothing is happening until this thing is over or subsiding. If you were able to grind and work during this whole last couple of years and be productive, props to you but no shade on anybody who just felt like look we can't work that way no no you know big yeah, bands yeah, little bands course. diy right. it's cool i mean listen <clears throat> i'm super sensitive to covid you know i lost my father who was 86 years old you know due to i would say like a very high strain an original strain of covid mm. uh he was down in florida and uh i mean it just ate him alive you know what i mean so but I have to tell you, like, you know, I've been vaccinated, but I am not getting the booster. I just don't feel like it's something I want to do. So if somebody doesn't want to get vaccinated, if somebody does, like, you know, everybody has the right for their own opinion and to do what they want with their body. And that's it. And I think that over time, uh, I think over time that everything has kind of really smoothed itself out. And I think my opinion is that COVID has really strained itself down. And I think that medical professionals probably have a good handle on how to treat, how not to treat. So, hey, you do what you want. You know, as far as we're concerned, uh, when this hit, we literally had like another like 16, 17 shows booked. We were supposed to play with propane. It literally got canceled the day before. We had another, I think at least, 11, 12, 13 shows booked, everything canceled. The EP had just come out. We were talking with somebody about going to Europe, like everything got canceled. So we were grateful of uh, like out of the box, how Raise a Glass was received, but it also got absolutely smashed because of it. And, uh, you know, and I would say that, you know, we waited till about, almost like exactly a year ago is when we started tracking the record. So, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't get in a room maybe when we, when they said we shouldn't have, we didn't do any of that. You know, we worked on our own. Uh, I worked on like my terrible garage band setup and really just got into a, a great groove. And then once me and Danny got in a room and started to work on uh, hey, these are the things I have written. And we started to work through them, you know, with Danny on drums, it was just a totally different animal. Mm. And, you know, we spent about two months in the studio just working through material. 
I think I had what I thought was about 25 songs written. And we literally worked on like 12 or 13 that we thought were like really good. And we just went in the studio, rough tracked them. Uh, and, you know, just went from there, you know, and the great thing was we were able to take our time, you know, our singer, Dylan Gordino, I really feel is like a, a special dude. And after we tracked, we were able to spend like two, three months doing pre-production vocals and really not just the performance, but really scrutinizing what do we want to say what is this song about and that's something that danny danny schuler does like every word has to matter and it's really been an unbelievable experience for me and for all of us i think we just became better a better band better songwriters and super excited that we're able to get a few songs out now and we have an entire full length already recorded which is great so we took advantage of the time. Amazing. Uh, by the way, I feel like we're all living in that meme where it's like, if you saw a matinee at CB's, you're immune to something. Nobody's immune, but I think it's funny. And, uh, you know, we've all been, you know, been in unfortunate dives and, and, and also great places and uh, survived. So we can survive collectively this. And I'm, I'm super stoked for this. I'm, I'm stoked for this new release i can't wait to hear a whole full length of this this is going to be crazy it's exciting uh to hear that you guys got to do that danny is also you know all you guys have production experience danny is a very well known for his producing as much as his iconic drumming in biohazard for those that don't know and suit you know guest appearances and other things and uh so really awesome it's it's a it's a it's a pretty i know that Sometimes people don't like the term supergroup because they feel like maybe the hype overshadows what you're doing. But in, in a sense, this really is like an East Coast hardcore supergroup. I don't dig that. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's it's a collection of people that love each other. You know what I mean? I've known Danny for, I mean, shit, like 30, you know, 35 years, uh, even maybe even longer. You know, the first uh, the, the first biohazard european tour we did together it was mucky pup and biohazard you know like 35 years ago that was the first time that they they went to europe and then you know from there where they took care of the rest you know what i mean but like we've been friends for 35 years uh me and larry the hunter really started this band larry is just a unbelievable phenomenal person you know great guitar player obviously, but like just a great person. Uh, Dylan and Jay are great people. We all have like family in common and it's really about the people, you know, like if you want to create great music, I feel like you got to surround yourself with great people who really love each other. And I think that originally, you know, that's how it was the same formula with Doggy Dog, you know, like we were brothers. We loved and, and still my best friends in the world are John Connor and Dave and, you know, Sean, God rest his soul. And, uh, you know, like that's that's how you do something that is special. And uh, you got to surround yourself with people that you really love. So, uh, you know, and it's no different in life. Mm. So rest in peace to Sean. That was a tough one for sure. Uh, yeah. if you were a fan of his right. and, uh, and, and generally a well-liked guy. So that's, you know, it's not just, uh, people like you for your talent or whatever. He, he was, uh, you know, a lot of people was an outpouring when he passed, yeah. uh, I mean, about Sean was everybody's best friend, man. Yeah. Everybody's drinking buddy, you know, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and, and it's kind of interesting in a full circle kind of way. I think one of your first shows ever was like at Tompkins square for a matinee, a hardcore show, that big hardcore show that happened right after the pandemic, sort of the first wave of it started to die down. They had that big show. You guys have played A7, which is insane that A7 is a thing again. Um, and shout out to all those people. There's a whole scene, despite everything and all the changes in New York City that are still trying to kind of preserve, uh, you know, kind of an yeah. old school thing. That's uh, really Jesse Drew Mayland. Stone. You know, that, yeah, Drew, that yeah. That's Drew Stone, like, you know, uh, Back to New York Hardcore Roots was a comp that we did uh, with Drew. He started shows at A7. Mm -hmm. uh, the first show that Kings Never Die played was at A7, actually. 
Right. We played at A7 and it was just like, it was just phenomenal, you know, and it was like, boom, like before my time came out, played A7 A7, and then the EP came out and then boom, 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 you know, and then everything, and then everything stopped. So, you know, shout out to Drew Stone. Everybody should go check out his, you know, really it's bi-weekly show. Uh, you know, it's up everywhere. YouTube, the, the New York Hardcore Chronicles with Drew Stone. Yeah, he is, he is an incredible documentarian, filmmaker, interviewer. We're going to talk to him soon about his current movie. We've, ta- we've, uh, you know, we've interviewed the great Michael Alago about that film. Yep. Who the fuck is that I'm guy? Going so. to, I'm going to the premiere on uh, next. It's on the 23rd, May 23rd. Me and my wife, actually, me and my wife, I think Danny and his wife, we're going to go to the premiere. Uh, and Howie Abrams, my old friend Howie Abrams, is going to be the moderator. So that should be great. And, you know, Drew's a, a, a really gifted guy. Like, you know, he's a filmmaker and always involved in the scene. He's a musician, promoter, uh, you know, has his own show. And, and I think it's phenomenal. Like, it's people like him. Uh, it's people like him. It's people like Cousin Joe and Black and Blue and Freddie that like they really keep the movement, the scene alive, you know, their hard work and really their love for uh, hardcore music or metal or whatever, whatever you want to categorize. I'm not big into into labels, but these are the people that keep making it happen. So, you know, without them, you know, what do we really have? Uh, Another guy is, you know, um. Joe McKay, hardcore Joe down in Philly. Like he had, he literally has created a monster scene. Like these people are, are gold, you know, they're pure gold for sure. Yeah. We've been very fortunate. This is hardcore. Just dropped their whole lineup too. So lots of, yeah, lots we're of playing fun. the pre-show. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff. That's yo man. That's, yeah, you know, definitely. that's yeah, a and, big deal. Again, like, thank you to Joe. Like we, are beyond appreciative for the opportunity to be able to play. And uh, actually we played black and blue yesterday. Right. From when we're filming this, we played Sunday, we played early, uh, but it was phenomenal, man. It was great. And again, it's just, we're just so grateful for the people that have given us any opportunity to help us, you know, just reintroduce this music and this band, you know what I mean? And, And that's really what it is. It's just a new band. It's not, you know, like, yes, me and me and Danny have been doing this a long, like a long time. You know what I mean? I'm uh, I'll say I'm I'm close to 50. I'll never say my age. same, but, you know, uh, uh, Dylan and Jay are much younger than us. Like, it's not like we're like a bunch of like older, like really all older guys doing this, you know. So the ages vary. And it's really again, it's just about the people and, and what we've created. We love it. You know, we believe in it and we're going to play it, no, you know, no matter what happens in terms of, um, you know, where it goes or how many people respond to it. I really feel like like we've we've kind of like we've won. You know what I mean? Because we get to do what we love to do. And we're also so grateful that there's people that are helping us and giving us the opportunity to play. And, you know, that's. That's that's most important. You know, it really is. That's so killer. I don't want to a- make you feel any worse about your age. My first hardcore show or first heavy show, really, that wasn't like an arena thing or a jazz thing was Mucky Pup and Burn at CV's on a matinee yeah. uh, when I was like 15 in, I'm going to say, 87, 88. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you never you never forget, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I think we I think Mucky like we played our first show actually in 1986, I believe, because we recorded Can't You Take a Joke in 1986. I think I was a junior in high school. So, but it didn't come out for like a year and a half. You know what I mean? But like literally by 1988, we were, we were, we had already gone to Europe. We had already toured the United States. Like, you know, back then it seems like a year was like an eternity where now a year just like flies by, you know? Mm. So Wild, wild times, uh, yeah. good times, certainly yeah. good times and the bad, uh, yeah. segue. 
And uh, but yeah, man, there's just a, a lot of good memories and a lot of good things to pull back on. And like I said, for people to do your homework, check out Mucky Pup, check out Doggy Dog, check out all Borough Kings, criminally underrated band. Uh, Should have been bigger. You know, I mean, look, the, when we when me, Dave and Sean did the All Borough Kings, uh, we did it with John Milnes that, you know, my still my best friend in the world, uh, the you know, the drummer of Mucky Pup. Uh, when we did that, it really was that was like a side project. You know what I mean? Like we did it really just for the fun of it. And, and that and we actually named the, we actually named the record just for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. But that was really a side project. Uh, aside from Doggy Dog, you know, I had already been, uh, I had already left Doggy Dog, you know, whatever the circumstances were, it was really just family and life uh, and, and some bad timing. But that was like a side project, you know, where we were blessed to be able to make a record and we did it and we toured for it. And then it was kind of like over. And then Dave and Sean went back to Dog Eat Dog. And after that, you know, I really didn't do anything musically until about four or five years ago. Uh, I hooked up with Eddie Sutton and I wrote a couple songs with Eddie, I'm Your Pusher. Uh, I did that, you know, really just like, cause I'm a huge Leeway fan. And, you know, I've loved Leeway since it was, it's like probably one of the biggest inspirations musically really changed the way I thought about music. It also changed like what music I love born to expire and just look around by sick of it all for me personally changed what I loved. You know what I mean? I was already like a big biohazard fan because we had spent time with them uh love you know urban in fact i love state of the world address more than i like urban discipline even but those you know you have to look back and say like what really shaped you musically and and those records actually are what kind of like took me away from like being like an adolescent or a kid that was, you know, writing like funny songs, like juvenile, you know, like Batman, the butt ripper. And like, it really turned me off to that and turned me on to like a new way to look at music. You know what I mean? So I'm really, I'm eternally grateful uh, for those two records I just mentioned. Like, I'm so grateful that they were created. So to have a chance to, to you know, to write musically, write a couple songs for Eddie, um and you know i had like the title i'm your pusher and the little hook you know but other than that it was uh it was awesome to do and it really just sparked me right back into like you know a writing i just started to write like a madman you know what i mean so, that's awesome yeah and it was awesome and i was <laughs> like writing music that i love like that i wanted to hear and it was great you know and i think that's why kings never dies sounds so different than the two other bands I guess that somebody might know me from in the past, you know. There you go. And of course, we're always thinking about Eddie, man. Uh, you know, yeah, we're, we, our thoughts are with him always and, and hoping for the best in that situation. He's a trooper and a fighter. Yeah. You know, just this is, we're getting old. We're losing some of our heroes. I hope we don't lose Eddie uh, before yeah, it's time. I, I, think, um, I think Eddie's doing, uh, I think Eddie's doing a little better. I know he's got a, a, a band together. They're going to play a couple shows. So, you know, I, always root for Eddie. I wish him the best. I love the guy to death. And, you know, I just always have positive thoughts and prayers for him. And, right on. It's like Roger. He's a super talented dude, man. I mean, he's yeah. very super unique talented. voice, unbelievable, you know, gifted guy. Yeah. Same, same thing with Roger Moret. I want to see that guy perform forever. You know what I'm saying? I he just saw him on play stage. on Saturday night. Yeah. 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 yeah it was uh, great. It's wild that like sick of it all <laughs> AF for touring together uh, yet again, uh, like 40 years of that, man, I'm, I'm here for it. I really yeah. am. It's awesome. It's awesome. And, and the thing is both bands are at like the top of their game. Like they crush it. They're out unbelievable live. I mean, you yeah. know, I mentioned just look around before that record just like, you know, had like a pocket, like a group, you know, but the last two Sick of It All records might be my two favorite Sick of It All records. So, you know, AF, Get Loud is like a phenomenal record. So, so fun. Yeah, fun record. You know, if people are not, uh, if they're not, uh, uh, 
you know, giving themselves the gift of listening to the new music that these bands are creating, like they're just shortchanging themselves. Like the last sick of it all record, Awake the Sleeping is is like top to bottom, incredible record. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not big on like when people are like, I just want to hear the old shit, you know, like get hip to the new shit because these bands are getting better and better and better as they, you know, we say age, but they're not aging. They're doing something they love to do. Like that's not aging. That is maturing. I mean, my hat goes off to, to, to all these historic bands because they're better now than they probably were 10 years ago, you know, right. for sure. And fans, if you don't support the new shit, you're not going to get to hear the old shit because yeah, these bands cannot survive unless you support them with your dollars and yeah. your attendance at shows and buying a shirt over a table. So Dan, man, super glad to catch up with you and talk about all these fun things. Kings Never Die, new music out now, new music on the way, hopefully tours. This is hardcore pre-show, all kinds of fun stuff. Props to you. Congrats to you. Uh, you know, stay strong, stay up and, uh, Super glad hanging out with you today. Thanks for spending time with Ghost Cult. Yeah, man. We appreciate it.